Boom, boom. Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your host for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst here. And we will be watching a fantastic match here between Palanters Technologies Prime on the blue side and on the red side, EY's Epic Yordles. Now before we get into this delightful pick fan phase, they're going to be cruising on through uh, because we did uh, pre... Uh, What's the phrase I'm looking for? We did already do this pick ban phase in chat to make sure everybody can get the right champions onto the right people because unfortunately we don't all own every champion in the game. <laughs> so we want to make sure we can get those proper swaps in. Um, but before I get into that, let me talk a little bit briefly about uh, these two teams and who they're playing for. So as I said, on the blue side it will be Planters Technologies Prime. They are a data management and security company. They are playing for Child's Play. Child's Play. Uh, one of the more frequent charities, uh, and you will be hearing about them more throughout the day as we cast. Um, they are a charity that uh, brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers uh, the joy of gaming, you know. Uh, once you've been through something traumatic like that as a kid, it's going to be hard to give back to actually feeling like a kid and enjoying your life um, as you're supposed to when you're around that age. So one of the things we can all agree on as gamers is that gaming brings us some of that same joy. So uh, this is a charity that tries to uh, go into those uh, areas where those children are in need of a little boost to their childhood experience and try and get them more in touch with a, a way to enjoy their childhood again and uh, escape sort of the day-to-day -day realities of what they've been through and really uh, just take some time and enjoy their childhood. You know, it's I can go on, but it's a great charity, so I'm really glad to see so many teams playing for that here. And on the red side, we have EY's Epic Yordles. Of course, um, EY is one of the big four audit companies in the world. They provide like legal consulting and advisory services, and they are playing for college for every student. Um, it helps underserved students get to and get through <laughs> college. Um, they're currently working in 27 states and notably also Ireland, so I always find that amusing. It's great. Um, I'm a big proponent of thinking, you know, the more you learn, um, just the better overall the quality of life for everyone in that community you're a part of. Education has always been a good thing throughout history, so trying to extend college to all through charity uh, is a, a great noble goal there. Um, so great charities on both sides. Let me move those headphones a little bit further away so I do not hear myself talk because I cannot think when I listen to myself. I do not know how you guys watching the stream are able to think right now. <laughs> but um, looking at the pick band phase here, as we do see it now completed, um, for uh, the blue side we do have uh, Wukong, Vi, and Aurelia coming out as the bands. Um, pretty standard bands overall. Uh, the number one ban, I believe, uh, for, let me actually look at my notes specifically here. Um, yeah, this, at least from the scouting I've done, the number one ban, uh, against this jungler, uh, for the red side should be that Hecarim. He really does love to bring out that Hecarim as much as he can. So, seeing, uh, Wukong and Vi banned, while they're both actually pretty strong, Wukong has a little bit weak early game. Um, because he doesn't really have any form of sustain throughout the jungle. I'm a little surprised to see those bands out. Maybe it's uh, just something they personally didn't want to see with the comp they were going for. They didn't want to see that uh, Viger get um, chased down, that Graves get chased down, because they don't have too much in the way of peel and that. Well, they theoretically do. Um, but maybe that was just their thoughts going into it. The same with Aurelia, she's able to dash in. Maybe they wanted to uh, make peeling a little bit easier for their team. And as we see the bands for the red side are uh, LeBlanc, Janna, and Amumu. Um, some good scouting here. Amumu and uh, LeBlanc uh, are the mains for uh, this uh, blue side's team for their, of course, mid and jungler. Um, so very good targeted bands there. Uh, Janna overall just a really good, solid support right now. Obviously the queen of disengage. Um, so definitely a solid pick there, especially if you're going to want to first pick uh, your support Nami there. Ban out that Janna, first pick that Nami, get your two strongest picks in your opinion. Um, Annie, we do see, is the support coming in for the blue side here. Uh, very strong support in her own right now. Um, after the infamous item has been deleted for good, um, she is does not offer as much burst potential if you do want to go through that um, raw damage route in the late game, but 
being that we do have a Viger and most people just go raw a glass cannon Viger in the mid lane, um, there's probably going to be plenty of magic damage coming in from that, so Annie's probably going to be looking to go more utility here. Just use her stun, um, try and get um, some cleansing effects to make sure nobody gets caught, that sort of thing. Um, and look to just really let, instead of the flash tibbers engage, mostly um, rely on that J4 flag and drag into the Cataclysm, the Malphite ultimate, uh, etc. And looking at the red side's composition here, um, of course we do see the infamous Nar and Jarvan have been broken up. They are on opposing sides this game. <laughs> so uh, we're not going to see um, too much of that synergy coming in overall. Uh, for these teams here, but we do of course still have um, the Hecarim and the Nar. So Hecarim uh, ulting people into a, a Nar ultimate can have a similar effect. It's much harder to do. Um, you got to have a really good coordination amongst your teammates here if you're going to want to do that. Uh, but if you play it right, even in a more open part of the map, Hecarim can displace people far enough to where Nar can ult them into a wall and get that stun and get his combo to lock them down for a significant period of time. And of course, Nami, with the insane range she has on her ultimate, um, can see that coming and just start her tidal wave off once that uh, the call is made to have Hecarim go. Or she can be the start for it with her tidal wave. And of course... While everyone's getting juggled around by all that CC, um, you of course have Lux waiting in the back line to just line up that ultimate and just annihilate everyone. Callista, uh, with this amount of CC, is going to be a very strong pick once she gets her Runon's Hurricane up because she's going to be able to get a lot of stacks um, of her arrows onto these people. Oh shoot, I did not mean to jump back there. Um, I meant to click on this Hecarim so we can see as there's going to be an early invade here for this red side, but it is spotted out by this ward in the tribalish. So unfortunately for this red team, they will be sitting on top of a ward here, looking to try and even uh, ping out going further towards uh, these Krugs here. And they're going to see it coming. They don't have a ward on it, but Annie did spot them. And they will see Annie, so they'll know they're spotted right now. And now it's just a game of reacting. Uh, the blue side opting not to uh, dive deep into their uh, red side's red side of their jungle <laughs> um, to try and get some deep warning. Though Malphite might be on a mission to do that right now. His trinket ward is down though. It looks like um, the only person with a ward right now uh, is Annie with just a trinket ward. So she's not going to be diving too far up there to try and get that. And again, great warding by the blue side here to actually spot out all these map movements here. Seeing that they're... Um, so deep into their jungle here. They're probably going to assume that this is going to be um, Annie actually going to think about poking forward to try and get vision on him. But this is probably going to be uh, easily assumed as a... Oh, they're on top of a ward. They don't even need that. Great. Oh, they, uh, they do get the ward. Okay, they almost didn't get that ward there. Um, but knowing that this is going to be a red start uh, off of this invade, uh, Jarvan probably going to uh, get this Gromp here, get this blue buff, and head up over here uh, to collect the enemy red buff here. So we'll see if there is any sort of shenanigans trying to uh, go from red to red with Hecarim, um, or call some support over from the Lux and Nar to try and stop that uh, count or answer invade um, once this has happened. So we'll see what's going on here. Um, and specifically, before we get into too much action here, while I still have a chance to breathe. Uh, Viger uh, being picked into this team where there is uh, a Lux um, and Nami is going to do quite a bit of damage. It depends on specifically what route you go with that Nami here as I really quickly get distracted so I can move everybody around to their proper lanes. Um, Lux is going to be the only target really uh, to get the full value off of his ultimate there um, as it does do bonus uh, damage based off of how much AP the target has. Um, but Nami even will build probably some s amount of AP, um, as we do see Hecarim actually went straight to that right and is going to be able to clear just before that Jarvan gets there. He will see that it's already gone. He will not know that the Hecarim is here though, so he won't be able to chase him down. So actually, fantastic play by this Hecarim here to get that red to red start and prevent Jarvan. So, uh, Nar's got to be close, or careful though, because he's got to know that J4 tried to go up there. Viger taking very little, actually probably going to have to be right now. Um, man, some good damage in here. Malphite not really able to do too much follow-up on that as he already is solo, taking all that harass from the 
uh, Nar at this point. Um, probably going to have to go B and have J4 hold for him. That's exactly what they'll be doing as we see some waves bouncing back and forth here in the bottom lane. But yes, like I was saying, uh, while you won't be able to get that full value off of that ultimate with Viger, if you do land a combo, even just a QR combo uh, on Viger, does a shocking amount of damage. So um, even if he throws that down on a Callista, he's going to have like no AP at all. Um, he's going to be able to get quite a lot of damage and once he gets an item or two he should probably be able to oh miley spirus miley spirus no gonna die to the grump oh no after holding that top lane wanted just a little bit more gold uh to try and get uh actually had enough to complete that stalker's blade so i'm not sure exactly what he's going for probably just trying to get one last camp but thankfully since it is early on uh, he didn't have any buffs to lose regardless, but, uh, he wouldn't have lost any buffs, um, from the jungle, and the death timer is so low at the start here that it's not actually, um, going to cause him too much of, uh, a hesitance. Uh, recalling, uh, and then healing actually probably would have taken about as long, so not gonna put him too far behind here, just unfortunately not gonna be able to get that Gromp CS as well. Um, but first blood to the Gromp, let it be noted. <laughs> yeah, so once that Viger uh, farms up his Q, uh, gets a little bit of extra AP damage off of that Q last hitting, um, he should be able to 100-0 pretty much anybody um, who's not a outright tank uh, in the game. Um, so even Gnar, when he's in mini Gnar after he's built some resistance should be able to uh, get 100 zeroed out. But Nar, we actually saw taking quite a bit of damage in this top lane. He's quite low. Um, there is a lot of sustain now onto that Malphite now that he's gone back and Nar, of course, hasn't gone back yet. So that's why we're seeing uh, what looks like such an uh, unusual state of affairs in the top lane. But uh, Nar should be able to poke him out and he will be hitting six first as he hasn't gone back yet. Uh, so we're going to have to... Uh, have, wait and see how careful uh, Malphite is once that 6 is coming up. Um, if Nar can manage uh, his Rage Bar to get that transformation right as he hits 6, um, it doesn't look like he'll be able to since he's throwing down a lot of autos right now. Um, but yeah, as we see the Mega Nar come out, he does hit 6 now though. Oh, if he had landed that stun, he possibly could have thrown him in the wall. Still, Malphite getting pretty aggressive, uh, fairly confident now that his shield's up. Uh, but we do see just some good old bruise in action in that top lane right now. Um, CS is uh, favoring this red side quite heavily, mostly in that top lane where there is a uh, 20, almost 15 CS differential right now. Doing math on air. Shouldn't do that. Um, and a negligible difference in this bottom lane, um, but something that is mounting. So we do definitely uh, want to see that Graves start to bully out this bottom lane. Um, if possible to try and get some damage, but uh, catch up on that CS, I should say. But it looks like the opposite's actually happening. It seems this Callista and Nami have total control of this bottom lane, and Hecarim roaming about uh, the enemy jungle right now, throwing down a pink ward. As we see Nami get a nice bubble onto that Annie. Callista gonna be hopping forward. That's some good stacks in there with the uh, Nami empowered auto attack off of her E. She was doing quite a lot of damage off of those autos, even without the rend. Um, so a lot of damage coming out there. And we see Nara actually missing the catch on the way back, so we won't have that uh, harass tool up to get uh, a little bit more damage onto that mouth fight. Um, who is out of mana right now, accidentally taking a turret shot right there is Callista, but she'll be all right. Um, as the Annie has gone back, but we do see Viger coming. It could be a flash uh, uh, stun here from the Viger if they're not careful. Now, gonna see it coming. Gonna jump away. That is a, that hyper mobility we see from this AD carry in Callista um, to just get out of there as soon as possible. And make sure um, nothing goes wrong there. Viger gonna make his way up to this mid lane here. Um, actually gonna take the long route, so he is not gonna spot spot out that pink ward. Um, and that pink ward, no, it is going to be spot out by the J4 here as he's walking through. Ba-boom! Oh, I actually didn't, no, there it is. Okay, ba-boom. Ba-boom indeed! <laughs> Worry not. Um, we do see Annie, uh, trying to get some deep wards of herself here. She will be spotted out, uh, by the smite on that wolf. Um, but they do get, she does get her mi warding mission down. 
uh, get some vision out there, and she's roaming over to that mid lane to try and make something happen there, but it looks like Lux, uh, seeing that she was going back in the vicinity, is going to play a little bit carefully here. Uh, and he actually opting not to take that CS in the middle lane uh, while Viger was getting his blue. Um, I actually would have advised it against that. Just hang around there, make sure those extra three or four CS didn't go to waste, but um, not going to matter too much overall in the long game perspective here. Um, as we, again, see some more trading back and forth here. Now that uh, Malphite has completed um, that Randuin's Omen, or uh, excuse me, that Warden's Mail uh, for his Randuin's Omen, uh, he will be training a little bit more effectively with the Gnar, who is still harassing him uh, literally to death. Uh, <laughs> with that early Brutalizer, going to be cutting through some of that armor, but he still does have the attack speed slow, so that will um, slow down Gnar on those passives with the three autos. Good dodge there on not walking into the wall uh, and getting slammed on uh, by that Viger. So good play by Lux, as we see Hacker, I'm going to ult in, and that will be a fear into the Nami ultimate. Great play there, and uh, the Summoner Heal gonna actually save this Annie as the Teleport comes in with J4 in tow. So if Malphite can buy enough time with the Malphite ultimate, and Graves actually landing the ultimate from deep, but the Summoner Heal gonna keep her alive. Lux's ultimate not quite enough, she flashes out. Oh, God, so many blinking red health bars right now, but nobody going down. First Blood still not going on to either of these teams, but it looks like the blue side with the favorable trade overall in their uh, advantage is going to try and take the dragon off of this. So while First Blood still only rests on Gromp, it looks like the first dragon will be going over to this blue side here. And yes, that is the first dragon. They do trade that. For a free Gnar in the top turret, uh, taking the top turret in the top lane though, um, as that teleport did come in from Malphite and Gnar's teleport was down, he did uh, just shove that top lane as quickly as possible and he is rewarded with a turret and we see um, largely nowadays uh, a turret for an early dragon is typically an exchange people are willing to make. So uh, since there were no kills going over to this blue side, actually overall not necessarily the best trade. Not my personal opinion is we shouldn't uh, always try and favor those early dragons because uh, they spiral. First and third dragon matter so much um, that I personally wouldn't trade a turret for a first dragon, but uh, I'm not necessarily in the conventional thinking on that, so we will see how this plays out uh, in these upcoming skirmishes. Overall, right now, looking at the CS again, we see that advantage has grown quite a bit in the top lane. Now, a, a nearly 30 CS lead here or excuse me, nearly 35 CS lead here in the top lane. Um, and the bottom lane has started to spiral a little bit as well with a 15, no, 20 now CS advantage in the bottom lane. Um, this wave will help even that out a little bit for that Graves, but um, overall, despite there being no kills and the dragon going over to this blue side in exchange only for a turret, uh, there is a uh, nearly, yes, now 2k gold lead in favor of the red side, so uh, this, that deceptive looking score right now actually slightly tilting in the red side's favor thanks to that global gold advantage they got from taking that early top turret and uh, allowing the Nar to shove that wave up, uh, hang out and farm those Krugs and then get this gank here as soon as Malphite pushes up a little bit too far which without the safety of his turret it looks like he might have done this could be first blood going over to the red side here Malphite gonna try and juke through the bush actually effectively does so but the fear gonna send him back towards the gnar oh but he ults over the wall Malphite just perfectly against the wall there and the flag and drag to stop the mega gnar when he's jumping great play by the j4 there but that could be his life I'm not sure if he'll be able to get out of there. We are watching those cooldowns. No, they're actually going to think better of it uh, than chasing him too deep in there. And actually, that was a first blood on a solo kill into this uh, uh, Lux Viger exchange. Let's watch what happened here. Viger actually catching out the Lux. Didn't have enough mana for his ultimate there is probably what was going on. And the snare into Lux's ultimate, who did have enough mana, is what's going to make the difference there. So that will be first blood onto this Lux here in the middle lane. Some fancy, <laughs> fancy Lux celebration scrolling there. Um, so finally, first blood does go over eventually to this red side. Um, so we'll have to see with that first blood advantage, um, Lux probably going to be able to go back and buy and... 
uh, this CS advantage that's starting to get way out of control here, um, they're going to have to rely pretty heavily on that uh, passive dragon damage they got from that first dragon to try and uh, focus their damage onto a single target early during one of these next team fights here and try and make something out of that. A lot of the caster minion damage, though, definitely not something to be neglected. They're going to make that trade go in favor of Gnar quite heavily uh, in the top lane there. And we do see Lux will be picking up this turret. Oh, Viger actually going to flash. He will catch her out with enough mana this time to actually get his ultimate. That will be the kill going over to Viger now. And Viger actually might want to turn on this Gnar here. As soon as those cooldowns are up, he does have them now. But the Gnar is already going to have backed away. Gnar right now does not have that Hex Drinker start against the Malphite in the top lane. Um, so he does have quite a bit of damage. Oh, but... Again, gonna jump back really quickly here. See what happened in this uh, jungle fight here in the river. Hecarim just a little bit low, gonna get caught out. Didn't react quickly enough and takes the full combo of the flag and drag and the cataclysm, and that will be uh, the second kill of the game, or the third kill of the game, the second kill over uh, on this blue side team onto that J4. And so far, we've only seen solo kills in this game. Despite a surprising amount of team fighting that has been occurring, so um, I'm excited to see once these teams actually start grouping together how that changes. Um, so far, it's just been mostly a an odd choice to ward in that bush, uh, probably knowing any. Just checking to see if any was still there. Having a feeling that the flash tibbers might be coming out. So going to play a little bit defensively here. But once we do start to see those team fights coming out. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what exactly Annie, just able to, just by being in the bush, going to zone them away from CS. Oh, absolutely disgusting play there. She'll come out of the bush here and reveal her position, try and bait them to go a little bit closer, and Viger uh, does not have his flash, but does have that catch, and he does catch the Callista, and with the Timbers, that's the chain CC, the Graves will not even need it, going down to the Annie. And that will be another kill going over to this blue side. And that's a, you know, that's exactly what I was saying they need to do. Actually, interrupting the recall there. J4 gonna try and smite this away if he can. And yes, he will smite it. Great smite by the J4 there. Uh, probably should have had the smite coming out from the Hecarim there. But unfortunately, it was down. It was not available. So um, that will be uh, the blue buff secured for this blue side. But yes, like I was saying, there's... Uh, at this point in time, with the way the gold was starting to trend in favor of this blue side, you really got to start making advantage, uh, taking advantage of those that passive dragon that you got early, which gives you um, that additional ability power here, as we see 6% AP and AD. Um, and the way to do that is to try and get some early skirmishes. The more skirmishes that uh, occur, the more they will be in favor of this blue side. So by trying to continually set up the or send the laners uh, to other lanes than the ones that they're farming to try and set up more engagements that's typically uh, overall gonna be something that works in favor of this blue side here so if they can continue to do that we might see this gold advantage actually start to swing back over to the blue side here and they have dropped it quite a bit to where it's under 2k right now so Hopefully with some good farming, with some good engagements here, uh, we can continue to see that. And it looks like Callista actually is caught out despite that beautiful hopping that we see. She's not going to be able to dodge out of three people. Annie never even needing to drop her stun onto her. Uh, and that will be Callista down for this dragon. And that will mean that Callista will not be able to rend the dragon away. Um, so it will just be a smite war here if Hecarim does decide to contest. And it looks like they're probably going to here uh, as we see... Nar and Lux. Lux maybe gonna try and throw down an ultimate to steal it. And she does! Lux able to steal the dragon away with that ultimate. Malphite not able to interrupt the channel with his ult ultimate of his own. And Graves actually gonna have his uh, ultimate missed out by the flash there. And that is the Viger damage I was talking about. Even though it's a Nar who has no AP. Absolutely able to 100-0 annihilate him with very little help from his teammates there. Though they will get the assist credit. So despite a great play by that Lux to steal the dragon with her ultimate. Oh, but hold on. We might see this Nami going down as well. The Viger ultimate is not up. So it will just be a little bit of harassment down to her. Punishing uh, some warding she's trying to get out there. 
And Lux gonna actually throw out her ultimate again. And great play by there to zone her out to not let Lux auto her and proc that passive damage. Uh, since he was uh, lit up by that. And he actually coming around the corner. Gonna actually be a flash during those jumps. Great mechanics by Callista there. And Graves actually gonna have to summon her heal and flash to dodge that bubble. Good bubble by Nami. Giving him nowhere to go, no option but to flash there. So that will be a uh, summoner heal and flash down for just a, a flash onto this bottom lane off of both the AD carries right now. And probably this turret gonna be going down here. Yes, that will be the bottom turret going down. So that is three turrets to zero. All of the outer turrets have gone down for the blue side. But in a sort of a response to that, it is five and one in kills in favor of this blue side. So uh, with the dragons now evened up, uh, blues gotta start warding up their jungle a little bit more strongly right now if they want to start uh, continuing to spiral the people they need into the right positions here uh, to where they can actually get um, that gold overall back in their favor here. It feels so weird seeing the way the, the game has been played to say that the blue side needs to catch up, but I mean that is the case when you are uh, absolutely don't have any objective control right now as far as the turrets are concerned. Uh, that gold, that global gold does pile up quite quickly. But luckily for them, uh, global gold is something that can swing back once they, uh, Graves gonna wisely back away here, once they start to create some pressure. So if they can continue um, to get the that level advantage through the experience advantage of killing uh, the champions rather than the turrets, they will be able to swing those uh, turrets back or, or that gold back around. And Lux waiting in this bush isn't aware that there's three people around. She does have the ward here, so she would see it coming, but she looks like she's actually going to try and take two on one as she sees the J4 and thinks better of that, though. Um, Viger trying to catch her out. Will he be able to land stuff? With the flag and drag, that's the stun as well. And with the ultimate, no, going to need the cataclysm to finish her off. But J4 happy to oblige there. And he will be able to get out without any damage from the Nar. Going to flag and drag away to safety. And that's another two kills over to this blue side. This is exactly what they need to keep doing right now. That global gold advantage from those turrets is essentially meaningless right now. Under a thousand gold. Um, despite the CS advantage they have, despite the turret advantage they have, uh, this red side not making good enough use of it. As we look on the map, they do have some good wards in the line of scrimmage, um, and the blue side is somewhat lacking in their ward coverage. So if the red side really wants to start getting ahead in this game, they're going to need to start pressing that ward advantage. Um, it could just be that they're not feeling very confident that they have as much ward control as they actually do with the blue side sort of opting to neglect that ward coverage uh, in lieu of getting uh, a little bit earlier uh, item breaks in their favor and with their kill advantage I mean it's hard to uh, <laughs> criticize them for doing so of course when you have a little bit of advantage in that gold um, it's a, always a good investment uh, to even yourself up in the gold but get those free wards essentially out on the map uh, but they do not necessarily have a gold advantage they just have a kill advantage so trying to get those early items is what they're going to want to do great dash there by graves away as soon as he sees that Callista coming in um, and unfortunately for nami her tidal wave does mo move pretty slowly so graves able to walk away from that one no problem here um, and we do looking again at those cs scores they are starting to even up quite a bit now Graves taking up that 12 gold, actually. I thought for sure it was 10. That's all right. That's nice. Nice little uh, buff there to people who are trying to deal with Callista. <laughs> um, but Graves uh, possibly uh, going to be a little caught out here with that Callista chase. No, she's actually not going to be able to catch on to him. And J4 waiting in tow. He will be spotted out by a ward. And we do see... The ward war is continuing right now as that dragon is 40 seconds away from spawning. We're starting to see everyone cluster around this dragon area, trying to sweep out as many wards as possible, trying to uh, get as many wards as possible down for themselves. Viger uh, throwing down that, trying to zone them away from the ward. Um, unfortunately, they do not know that they are standing on top of the ward right now, otherwise they could throw down another sweeper. Actually, they do not have a sweeper available, but Graves, left alone in that bottom lane, able to 
Uh, get that. The good throw down of the pink ward right there. Um, able to get that bottom turret, so... Finally, a turret answered uh, in favor of this blue side here, and with that, that's a critical timing to get that turret because that will alleviate a lot of the pressure here onto this dragon um, as the blue minions are pushing fairly deeply uh, in favor uh, of the blue side in their bottom lane. And that will free them up to take this dragon. They're starting it here. They do have a dash and flag and dragon to get out of that pit if they want to leave, but they're going to try and finish this off first, and that is the teleport it's going to be canceled. Uh, good, good use of the teleport there, I would argue, uh, just to be safe. Wow, actually, J4 almost 100 0 by that Lux Q and ultimate. Oh, goodness, if Lux just had a little bit more damage, perhaps if instead of the Merc Tread, she had gone for, uh, those more standard boots with the Spell Pen, and that is 100 0 out yeah, by the Viger again, trying to go for as much damage as possible. Um, not resulting, but the, here comes Hecarim to actually ult and clean up that Annie. Not going to be landing a stun is the Viger. Overall, that will be a one for one, but in that extended fight, there is a dragon that went over to the blue side. Not the most critical damage uh, uh, dragon in the world, just gives that damage over um, to the blue side. A little extra damage on those turrets, on those minions, but that's exactly where the blue side needs a little help right now is uh, trying to answer on some of these outer turrets. So, getting that second dragon will help them do so. It'll help them close. Uh, uh, well, I'm so used to saying close the gold lead, but actually extend their gold lead. Right now, we do see the blue side in a uh, pretty strong gold lead, almost a thousand gold in the lead right now. Lux, of course, spamming out that ultimate as frequently as possible. She does have uh, that uh, uh, cooldown of the Morella Namakon. She does no longer have the blue buff, um, but with the extremely low cooldown just at a base level of that ultimate... Uh, Definitely a good choice there to just spam it out to try and get some further wave control here when possible. And, you know, she's been very on point with trying to land that ultimate onto people to 100 zero them out. So once she actually gets a little bit more damage now that she has completed the Zonias, uh, maybe she will be able to uh, get somebody out here. It seems like she probably was going to go for a death cap initially um, with just that needlessly large rod, but perhaps. Uh, the three deaths starting to get into her mind a little bit here. Going to go for a little bit more defensive of a choice with that Zonia. So she will be able to dodge out some of the Graves damage. Dodge out some of that J4 damage. And hopefully uh, actually use that stasis effectively. Uh, especially on Viger who's been blowing her up quite a bit. Once she sees the uh, Q and the ultimate travel time. She'll be able to Zonia that to make sure that damage doesn't actually get delivered to her. Um, if she can play it effectively, but Nami looks to be caught out here. No, actually, not going to commit too hard on it, seeing that there were some more members of the red side. Blue side's going to choose to back off wisely so here. And we see Lux actually getting caught out with that stun. Graves' ultimate does miss, though. Not going to be able to hit anything uh, of consequence there. So that will be a disengage for the red side successfully here. As we see a little bit of vision coming in making sure they're actually still hanging around that turret um, to know whether or not they can press this outer turret try and get that global gold again uh, but with four members here they might be able to do it with that tip as a tank and no they're gonna have a teleport in from this full team here with Malphite Tivers sent forward to tank a little bit. Can't quite decide if they want Tivers to tank it or not. That indecision just gonna gift over a free 50 gold in the end to this uh, Callista here without really doing too much. And that will not be 100 0 onto the uh, Viger here, though, taken quite low. Probably going to be removed from the fight now as we see the rest of this blue side disengaging. Because that is the power of looks. I mean, anytime she gets a squishy with one of those snares, she's just going to immediately channel that ultimate without hesitation. And that is absolutely the right play to make there uh, to continue to try and force them to disengage when they don't want to, when they want to continue to fight. And it looks like J4 actually is going to pick up this blue buff onto himself. I'm not sure uh, if Viger, he does not have a blue buff currently. Though, of course, he does have that Morel Nomicom uh, completed, which gives you quite a bit of uh, mana regeneration nowadays. And it additionally, um, the passive of Viger is like a built-in Athene's uh, Unholy Grail passive. Um, so actually, no. 
good guy, uh, J4, are just going to tank up quite a bit of damage to gift it over to Viger. Viger, who accidentally autos and doesn't Q. There you go, Viger. <laughs> um, so in the meantime, Nar did steal this Gromp away. Uh, and Malphite looking to try and fight here, but not going to be able to, unfortunately, there. For this blue side, but... As we try and switch the camera, there we go, over to Graves here in the middle lane. Um, we see some ward battles going off to the side, but Lux actually caught out, and with that, not able to get her zonies off, I'm sure was slamming on that two key. Uh, in her case, the one key, as hard as she could, that will definitely be this middle turret going down to pay for it. Um, but the stun of Viger lasts just so long that you couldn't even get that Zonia's out of it. Um, the Annie stun not even needed to combo and uh, the tidal wave does hit her, but actually Viger trying to turn and combine with the Graves ultimate that will not be enough on a more tanky Hecarim, but the Gnar ultimate not going to be enough damage to get that Viger, and that will be Gnar going down even in Meganar form, unfortunately for him, not able to get anyone into that wall, he was trying to aim it to get as much damage onto that Viger as possible, but Viger of course did not go down, and with the dragon spawning in 15 seconds, after taking that middle turret, this game looks to be spiraling in favor of the blue side, despite during the early game, the almost entire entire early game, um, having that gold deficit uh, because they lost those outer turrets, all three of them, so quickly. It looks like they've recouped perfectly fine here, sort of uh, proving, I guess, proving me right <laughs> that that early dragon um, uh, over the early turret is not necessarily an unfavorable exchange, and we are going to back up here. Unfortunately, this camera did not jump to where it needed to here. We're going to watch this Annie. Um, as Lux comes here, she does have that stun up. The Tibbers, the full Annie combo, going to take Lux very low. Lux going to try and answer on the Annie. Actually, does hit both Viger and Annie, so Viger's super low, and Annie is completely taken out now, forcing the flash onto J4. Hopefully, he'll be able to fly and drag over the wall here. Looking to actually... Uh, maybe try and flag and drag over that blue. No, he is going to flag and drag over here. But with that summoner heal, that will not be enough. The cooldown just taking a little bit too long for J4 to get out of there. So that will be a uh, good answer there after the dragon. A two for nothing. Uh, a little disjointed, unfortunately. Now we're going to hope that the dragon was there. Going to realize that no, that is the third dragon. Uh, third? Is that... That is critically the third dragon, that extra movement speed. So, unfortunate, perhaps uh, not quite used to that third dragon movement speed buff yet. They charged a little bit uh, too headstrong into that next engagement and were not as grouped as they needed to be, um, which resulted in the two free kills. Beautiful stun onto everyone, absolutely blowing people up. But it's Viger who's blown up by that luck. She has hit the point where she has enough ability power to just QR you to death. Viger ha does not, because of that Morel Nomicon start over the Athenes, does not have any ma magic resistance built at this point. The only sort of defensive capabilities he has is that flask, which will not help you when you are being bursted out. Nami, gonna be able to... Oh yes, indeed, clean up that ward. Good, good uh, uh, catch there by Nami. Um, to not walk right past that or give up thinking she wouldn't have enough time on that. Got that last auto in just in time. But yes, uh, Viger is going to um, continue to get revenge focused by this Lux after uh, getting focused herself so much in the early game here. Um, so he's going to have to be careful uh, with that Lux who will just continue to sit back and 100 zero you. I mean, I'm sure Viger's communicating that to his team right now, communicating that to the rest of his team. As we do see J4 caught out a little bit, looking to trade back and forth. Gonna just flag and drag over the wall and get the uh, CS over here. But yeah, so certainly with that squishier Annie, I mean, she does have uh, the Leandries built for a little bit more tankiness. Um, but with that squishy Annie, with that squishy Graves, you're gonna have to be very careful uh, with the ability that uh, Lux, I mean, if you don't backline properly, um, you're going to get caught out in 100-0 by that Lux, who, yeah, I mean, if she continues to get kills with that combo, she's going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with, as that is one of the strongest AoE ultimates in the game, 
Um, but we do see finally uh, the turret's uh, score is reversed in favor of the blue side now. This red buff is going to be contended with. They are going to choose to sweep out the vision first here. Uh, they don't have the J4. Now they have the J4 here. So with that smite in tow, he will be able... Actually, doesn't finish it off with the smite. So could have been contested. But with four members hanging around, probably the better choice. Here comes Lux. Trying to uh, catch out, unfortunately, for her, the Malphi, who is taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to try and turn around. And he will ultimate and allow that uh, combo CC. But it's not going to be enough. Viger does catch out the Lux uh, with that kill. And that will be overall a double kill going over to this Viger. Uh, but that is a J4 going down as well. So overall a 2 for 2. Not necessarily the most coordinated fight there by the blue side. So it ends up just being an even trade. But that is sort of the power of this lead that the blue side has cultivated for themselves at this point. Uh, in order to really have that ability to... Even if they don't get the best engagement the best catch they are still able to turn around engagements like that into an even trade and Lux you know I mean the it's hard when there's this much CC on the side of the other team but you got to start more predictively using that Zonia's because if you just continue to let that Zonia sit there and <laughs> Graves farming that over the wall for style points if you continue to let that Zonia sit there and try and reactively use that Zonia's with this much CC, the damage will never be coming first. The CC will be coming first. And once you have one CC on you, you're going to take all the damage they want. So Lux has got to start... Uh, I mean, as hard as it is to use this, and I mean, you can definitely use it predictively and then put yourself in a precarious situation. But there's no real other option in this kind of, when you're facing this kind of a comp with a Malphite, with a J4, with a Viger, with an Annie. There's just so much lockdown CC that you're going to have to start using that Zonius predictively. And, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else Lux can try and do aside from what she's been doing where she tries to uh, get out her combo immediately. So if she is caught out, uh, she doesn't... The, the rest of her team isn't missing too much because her cooldowns were already spent. So, I mean, she's doing that very effectively, and if she continues to do that, uh, it certainly uh, will be good for the rest of her team, and will give her the rest of her team the opportunity to follow up on that uh, damage that she has output to make the plays themselves here. And actually, good steal away from the J4 uh, with that Q from the... Uh, Callista there to steal away the razor beaks or raptors whatever that camp is they're wraiths okay they're still wraiths I don't care uh, steal away the razor beaks there now we're scouting a little bit with that boomerang actually gonna be caught out here will Viger no Viger gonna not choose uh, to burn the ultimate on him there seeing that he did have the jump still up gonna think wiser over there oh but actually dashing into the uh, Lux Snare is Graves, but with that Annie able to 100-0 the Lux before she can get the damage out. She tried to channel that ultimate as quickly as possible, but wasn't able to. Wow, that that damage on Anar actually going to be able to be finished off by the Malphite. That is how much damage they had. Oh, great ultimate by Callista to save that Nami's life. Absolutely save her life there. Um... But yeah, certainly, I mean, Nami, good choice building that Michael's Crucible, um, Mikhail's what, Crucible, whatever, um, to try and start saving um, people who do get caught out by that Viger. Um, but unfortunately, she just not, she just has not been in the right position to use it on people. Um, and of course, when you're caught out, uh, that's something that's hard to plan for and hard to position for. So uh, certainly, no blame on the Nami for that at all. Um, Doing the best you can. And she is 0 and 5. So certainly putting in work on that Nami uh, as much as possible. But actually possibly baiting out a fight here. They see this Viger. Going to choose to blow up the Nami first. And that's a good ultimate from Lux. But not going to have anyone around her to follow that up with. And that will just be the free Nami kill. As we start to see this vision come into uh, factor here. Now let's look. I mean... They do have some good vision around that dragon pit to try and contest those dragons as much as possible. But that means the rest of their jungle is absolutely lacking. And it facilitates uh, catches just like this one. And that absolutely insane damage. That was not even with the ultimate from Viger. Probably should have expended the ultimate there. 
as we do see, looking at the Viger, I believe there's uh, da, 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 158 bonus AP on that Q now. So, actually caught out and blown up is the Hecarim. Hecarim dares to build just a sliver of AP with this Iceborne Gauntlet and he will not be spared. Even despite the MR he has built, Viger will absolutely destroy him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that one of Viger, uh, the main, most frequent builds, I should say, for Viger, uh, was with that item that was deleted for good. This is the power of Viger without that item even available as an option. With that Death Cap, with that Void Staff, um, gonna be looking to build a Zonius here off of that other needlessly large rod. This is the kind of power Viger offers you, and when you go 8, 2, and 5, you, you just become an absolute nightmare. You absolutely... I mean, with that weak early game, with how much uh, you'll try and Q farm in lane, that really lowers your mana pool. Uh, you're not able to have any combos up. Maybe enough mana for one ability or two if you're lucky. Um, but you got to punish that Viger in the early game. You got to put him behind because if Viger is allowed to get that Q farm going, um, to get some items going, even without kills in lane, he will start to have more kills in these team fights as he just annihilates people with his combo that is just so strong one of the strongest combos still uh in the game in my uh opinion right now as you see annie stepped a little bit too far forward gonna have to burn that stun to try and save her and the snipe who snipe from the lux gonna result actually 100 zero though is nar and Callista gonna get taken out with the help of that Viger damage again and Lux gonna be forced to flash over the wall. So despite getting the catch to start that off, it will be a 2 for 1. Uh, yes, no, just a 2 for 1 at this point. And a good position on this inner turret in the bottom lane. Looks like they're gonna tank up a couple turret shots. A little bit of miscommunication there from the team of whether uh, they want to actually tank that turret or not. Uh, probably was the wise decision. Uh, to back off and just collect that free blue buff as this turret is still pretty healthy and the minion wave was coming along quite nicely here. Um, and Lux able to almost completely clear that entire wave um, but not going to be unfortunately for them enough to fend the blue team off of this turret so now that is six turrets to three that this blue side has not uh, been able to get much done since that really fantastic early game where they had strong rotations um, They've just been absolutely sort of shut out from the rest of the game here. Uh, with Malphite uh, getting that Rod of Ages fully stacked, with Viger starting to go insane uh, with his abilities. Um, uh, stacking up is the phrase I'm looking for. With his abilities stacking up on that Q uh, with his items completed. Uh, right now, I mean, what we have to look for here is... I mean... Pausing for what we have to look for for a moment as we see another fight breaking out. Uh, certainly Malphite is not the target they want. They're actually going to force him to ultimate. And the Nami ultimate will catch him out. And that's some good CC. And it looks like this Graves is going to try and fend him off with the Summer Hero. It will be enough to turn this engagement around yet again. That Gnar ultimate going to put some people into the wall. Going to get some really nice combo CC actually. And that will be a double kill on Lux. And just like that, it looked like what was about to turn around back in the blue side's favor. No, it's still going to be in favor of the red side. J4 going to flash into more of the team. No, he is going to be able to flag and drag away. And Annie, not quite with enough burst, going to be forced to flash herself. And using that Timbers to jump is this Callista who's inside the base now. Not able to jump over the base gate. Going to have good guy Nami tank up that turret a little bit. But wow, absolute great courage there showed by this Callista to just you follow that Tibbers into that. There was a slight hesitation, but she decided to go with it very quickly. And they're going to be rewarded with that 3 for 1 trade and this uh, dragon here. So they will prevent a very critical fourth dragon. Um, not necessarily as critical as the other dragons, but it would set up for that fifth dragon. So preventing that, delaying that fifth dragon uh, even further for the blue side um, is going to make sure that this game doesn't have that option where they can absolutely just face roll and just 
push mid or something to the base and just win. Preventing that dragon stack a little bit longer is what they needed to do. And it looks like Annie um, is going to throw down some vision around this Baron as they look to set up to try and get a Baron here to get some of that pushing power um, on to this siege that it looks like they're looking to set up in. Caught out again is this hacker. I'm not quite able to be 100 0 so that is the Viger Ultimate down. But that will mean Hecarim not able to contend this dragon, or excuse me, this Baron with his smite. So you gotta ask what they can do. They can try and uh, get it away again with the Lux, who with the with the combo of the Nami Ultimate, the Nami Bubble, able to stop J4. Let's see that again. Let's look at this absolute MVP Lux stealing that away with the help of Nami. So keep an eye on J4 here. He's gonna be looking to smite this out, and he's no, he actually does smite, or he does not smite. He just misses that smite there. One more time, because I want to just quickly look at how much HP was on that when it died. Sorry to replay this again for any fans of the blue side here, but no, yeah, that was within range. That was only six and a half hundred hit points on that Baron. Absolute great uh, objective steals from this Lux, able to perfectly time her ultimate to steal them away. Lux might single-handedly be keeping her team in the game with those steals. Definitely gonna be a champion that is absolutely gonna be banned out against uh, <laughs> this team in the future. So, um, wow. I am just very thoroughly impressed by that Lux play. I mean, EY, enjoy this the rest of this game with that Lux while you can, because that is not going to be something that's <laughs> given away to you ever again. And I mean, with that Baron now on their side, they are going to look to push up the mid lane here, try and create some pressure, uh, maybe even up that turret count a little bit, uh, since they do only have their in uh, inhibitor turrets up for the red side, they're going to look to try and even that out and try and make that the same situation with those Baron minions uh, burned up minions, I should say, uh, wailing away on the turrets. They do go down quite quickly now. So, with the gold advantage, uh, still up by nearly 4.5k here in favor of the blue side, they are going to want to be very careful with what kind of fight they pick if they try and push forward here. Uh, blue can certainly just choose to jump on them and get a good engagement, and if there aren't any burned up minions around, an engagement probably will not go in the favor of this red side, so... Uh, very wise of them to rotate down to uh, this big uh, wave that they have in the bottom lane. Gonna just be able to auto away those um, pesky wards being placed. But good catch again. Hecarim, definitely not the one they're looking for, but able to take quite a bit of damage as well if he's not careful here. And they will have a little bit of trouble getting through these minions here, especially with that canyon. A cannon minion gonna just sit and wail away. No, they are just gonna back off a little bit, not feeling too overconfident here um, with the siege. You're gonna just safely wait for this next wave of Baron Up minions, and there is another cannon minion in this wave, so they will have quite a bit of damage here. We're gonna have to keep an eye out for that Lux ultimate again. If she can get a really good ultimate, she's throwing out that Q pretty aggressively, trying to catch out that Graves. If she is able to land something like that on another squishy target like a Graves, like an Annie, like a Viger, um, it's certainly going to be something uh, that can 100-0 them out, even with the little bit of magic resistance we see starting to be built with those Spectral Cows coming in for the blue side now. Really starting to respect that Lux damage uh, from that ultimate here. And with that... Uh, Lock of the Iron Slayer completed. Actually, Malphite gonna flash ultimate in, and the Nami reactionary ultimate not gonna be enough. It actually doesn't hit anyone, I don't think. And uh, that's a double kill action everywhere. Tr three kills going over to this blue side here, and we're gonna see a delicious little kite fest here, Mojang. Oh, actually, 20, <laughs> one shot away from finishing off that Malphite down. Actually gonna try and jump over here to finish him off. Will she be able to do it one time? Yes, she does! The Kiting Queen! Gonna get a little overconfident here, trying to still hang around and fight this Graves, but if she can do it, oh wow, actually only 16 hit points away. Gonna get a good run though, slow him down, and she will make it out of here. Oh, the great 
job with this Callista to really demonstrate the mechanics of the Kiting Queen here. Absolutely fantastic play, and she will even pick up a Scuttle Crab for her troubles on the way back here. Um, actually, <laughs> she does miss that Scuttle Crab. Gonna scuttle away here, feeling uh, not confident enough to go back there. Gonna take up just a little bit of farming, a life steal, back up to full health. Take that red buff and go back to buy. Great play by that Callista and that looks like cannot believe she went back into that team. Uh, I believe she even flashed over that uh, uh, wall into that uh, Malphite. The guts to do that and just have so much faith in your kiting mechanics is insane. Well, en enough of my fawning over a couple of members of this UI team here. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about this dragon which is coming up in 20 seconds. Now there's two dragons on the red side, three dragons on the, or excuse me, is that four dragons on the blue side? Yes, that actually is four dragons on the blue side. My apologies there. So uh, we will be seeing if they can get this dragon, we will see that insane monster dragon buff um, onto uh, this blue team here. So the red side has no other option but to try and contest this dragon. And the question is how they're going to do this. It looks like Hecarim's just going to charge right in. Great Nami ultimate lands on three people. Comboed with the uh, Lux to actually take them out. But Lux going to be going down. Actually, the Kiting Queen, will she be able to give us a repeat? She's going to take down this Malphite as well. And Nar actually going to be able to get away. It's a question now of... No, actually just not able to quite get that Nar. Is this Graves here? And that... It was a good delay, uh, but we might actually see this Callista here. Um, she's going to be in vision of it, but she might try and just solo this dragon. She's going to throw down a pink ward, and she's going to try and do it. Will Graves actually come? Now, if he... No, he sees the teleport, he's going to back away here. With all the amount of uh, uh, spears that are lodging in this dragon, um, if Graves did come around um, and got a single spear in him and she overkilled the dragon... I believe it's still in the game where uh, the rest of your Ren stacks will jump up to another Ren target, so <laughs> he could just be absolutely blown up um, out of nowhere. So gonna, especially with that teleport, think better of that. But now that is three dragons over to this red side. A very close game coming out. Uh, only, uh, well, I say only, but as we get this turret here, it's gonna be even less. So just three and a half k in the lead is the blue side now. Um, with a lot of good uh, just statistical things going back in their favor again the three dragons the baron steel going over to the red side if they can keep this up can, can continue to counter jungle um, to try and keep that CS advantage uh, in their lead as well um, which has uh, in the middle lane at least has uh, flip flopped over and gone in favor of this Viger uh, but all other lanes do still have that advantage overall I guess aside from uh, the support, though that is negligible at this point. Um, but we do see uh, the uh, Scrying Orb coming out. They do know that this dragon's up. They do know there's a pink ward there. They do know that the Scuttle Crab has been taken. So they're probably just going to clean up this pink ward, throw down a ward or two of their own, and back away. It looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to rotate down to the middle lane, try and create some pressure here in the middle lane. It looks like Red Side not going to uh, try and take this Baron. They're going to just go back think, thinking that... Uh, they would give up uh, the inhibitor, and that's not what they want to do. Cracking this base when you're behind is certainly not what you want to do. But will there be enough of them back soon enough? Well, that is home guards on a couple of people. It looks like they will be here in time. Graves trying to wail away, but they will be forced away by that Callista, by that Lux. All that wave clear they have will force them back. But seeing they've gone back, they will be uh, rotating back around towards this dragon. Now that they know that they're safe, there's no one around. They'll be able to uh, throw down their sweepers, try and get the vision control here. Sit in a bush. They did sweep out this bush. Unfortunately, this ward right here showing that they never walked by. So um, the raptor going to be procced on this ward, thinking it's down here. Actually, they're going to miss out on whatever ward coverage they could have swept out. But now, um, no, there is a ward here right back there. Um, <laughs> for this red side, so they know that the Baron has on start. Lux looking to catch out Annie, just out of range, unfortunately, for Lux. Um, and Viger not able to catch anybody out, just gonna continue to farm up that Q. Let's check again in on that Q damage. That is 
214 extra AP onto that Q. Absolutely monstrous. Remember, Death Cap gives you 120, so that is a, almost like a double Death Cap, aside from the uh, uh, passive of Death Cap, of course, onto that Viger. So, absolutely insane damage. There's not enough MR in the world for that. It's getting. It's getting in range of absurdity like you see on Cassiopeia nowadays. Just insane amounts of damage um, onto that Viger. So we do see, of course, that locket now completed onto the um, uh, Nami. Uh, we do see uh, MR pretty much onto everybody with those uh, Spectral Cows coming out for the last few people. The Mercurials for the AD carry. The uh, Banshee's Veil for the top laner, and the Banshee's and Spirit Visage after he was punished for not having enough MR a couple times for daring to build a little AP. Uh, he was punished quite heavily, so Akram doubling up on that MR. Hopefully, that will be enough for them. Um, but itemizing uh, strongly against that uh, uh, ability power uh, with all those Merc Treads coming out as well might leave them a little vulnerable to uh, this Graves if he can get in good position alongside the J4 as well to get a lot of damage in. That's certainly not damage that should be neglected as it looks like that will be the blue buff here going over uh, to this Viger from the red side. And red side doing the wise thing here, sending out those ghosts to scout, hanging around those uh, inner uh, inhibitor turrets, uh, just tur turtling up as much as they can here. Try and relax. Take it easy, not overextend, not get caught out. Just take what they can. Uh, rely on the fact that they do have uh, eyes on Baron um, as we see that ward replenished again um, to make sure that nothing, uh, no shenanigans are going down. Unfortunately, um, <clears throat> when you see the scuttle crab is taken, it will be expired by the time the dragon comes up, but uh, there is no vision for this red side on that dragon. And again, we gotta remember. It's still four dragons. The most terrifying thing about seeing four dragons on the enemy team is that there's a threat of a fifth. So, I'm actually going to try and start out this brain here. There is vision of it. So, looking to try and get a bait here. No, they're going to sweep and see that there is a teleport coming in. Going to be forced to back off of this brain here. And that will be them backing away. They will clean out some of this vision a little bit. But... With these wards laid down, they will have a good cover of the Baron area now. And it will uh, be more likely to be a contest over this dragon. Uh, if the blue side wants to try and force an engagement, it should be around this dragon pit area. Uh, because, I mean, if they hand that fifth dragon over to the blue side, uh, it's not going to be in their favor. So red side actually going to try and rush down the dragon themselves, sending that Callista and uh, Hecarim over actually with this pink ward looking to get a pick. But... Nope, throwing down the ward, not going to be fooled, is the Jarvan, who will see the dragon as it spawns. Here comes Hecarim. Here comes Callista, throwing all those spears into that. It won't be available for a steal, unless there's some misplay here. Let's keep our eyes on J4. There's going to be... He's going to flag and drag over, letting them know. But Callista, with those stacks, so many stacks, keeping the stacks up. That will be enough. She will rend it away, and that will be... Nar actually miscommunication there, going in, Nar all by himself with the Malphite who went in as well. Looks trying to do what she can to put that in, but the J4 gonna force her flash, and that will be Hecarim going down as well in addition to the Nar. And Lux gonna be caught out just on the edge of that, gonna be taken out by the Viger. So overall that will be a three for nothing in favor of the blue side here. They do get the fourth dragon for themselves as well for the red side, but with three members down now, probably not the wisest decision to try and pick a fight after that. Oh, but we see the Queen of Kite here in the middle lane. We're going to have to watch the bottom lane here as we do see an engagement forcing the flash here. That Let's watch the end of this here really quickly. Uh, finish, finish him. Come on. There we go. All right. But well, we did see, <laughs> we did see uh, the kill coming out onto this Lux here, um, taking down the turret and this uh, Nexus turret as well. So, Callista, sort of just distracted by that kill. Actually, no! Gonna just barely dodge that out. And with the tidal wave, with the Callista ultimate, no, that will not be enough. Unfortunately, Callista putting a little bit too much time there in the end onto that. Uh, <laughs> nice little dance there from Viger. Um, putting that focus onto the last kill there. 
uh, on oh my brain right now Malphite there we go I'm gonna give enough time over to this blue side to just push up and take the rest of those turrets get enough damage just barely in to finish off uh, that nexus so that will be the game going over to the blue side here planter technologies prime taking the victory and as we look very quickly here over the story of the game uh of course being that viger who went absolutely insane but certainly not negligible was the graves who brought a lot of that mixed damage in um almost more no more in fact than anyone on the uh red side's entire team uh including that of course uh uh, Lux that we saw go quite insane um, with a lot of her AoE damage hitting and 100 zeroing out a lot of people. And Callista, who was on an absolute tear this game. Unfortunately, that was just not enough uh, to swing the game back in their favor. Once you have a Viger that has gone this much in favor um, of your team, I mean, he hit full build so much sooner. Uh, than everybody else he was able to just blow people up so quickly and even have a banshee's veil of his own to make sure he didn't uh, get caught out it's just hard to play against something like that and when you see the itemization coming out all these merc treads um well <laughs> all these merc treads i should say um and all these uh mr items the banshee's veils the lockets the mikhail's crucibles that leaves you so vulnerable looking again uh, Ignoring for a moment the Zonias, which has a small amount of armor, we only see the Randuins and the uh, Sunfire Cape on the top lane Nar. There is no other armor. Again, a little bit of negligible armor on the Iceborne, but aside from that, there's no armor on this team. So Graves, who was 6-1 and 13, participated in a lot of kills, had a lot of damage coming out, and with just a single... Uh, last whisper was able to take just chew through what little armor they did have and provide quite a bit of damage along with j4 who also in addition to this pen that he has on his jungle item built a black cleaver for a little extra pen a little extra ad and that mix of damage i feel is probably what in the end uh was the bane <laughs> of this red sides uh gameplay so uh without any more rambling about the game how it went Thank you for watching. If you want to stay tuned uh, with any more After Hours Gaming League matches, uh, the full schedule is posted on the After Hours Gaming League website. The videos will be uploaded there. And if you want to stay tuned to specifically games that I am casting, I will be uploading all of the casts um, to my channel. About Take about an hour, an hour and a half uh, after they are cast live, which I will now, apparently given the success of today's ability to not crash my computer, I will be streaming. <laughs> uh, all the weeks going forward so if you want to stay up to date with the games I'm casting feel free to subscribe to my channel stay tuned here I will be uh, streaming all the games in the future um, to this channel and thank you for watching I hope you uh, enjoyed this game and I will see you guys next time